monsters have always stalked the night. Since the world began, tales of terrible beasts in the dark have been told around the fires holding the shadows at bay. All these tales have the same message. We are not alone. From the trolls of Europe to the Bigfoot of California, the swamp ape of Florida to the Yowie of Australia, all are Sasquatch. This is their story. So many critics of Bigfoot ask, if Bigfoot is real, why haven't we found bones? To answer these questions simply, we have. Practically from the first day Europeans set foot on the American continent, they began unearthing unusually large skeletal remains. Said remains were reported to be 7, 8, even 9 feet tall if standing upright. Today no public trace remains of these giant skeletons, even though they have been unearthed right up until very recently. In the US, at least, it seems a concerted effort has been made by the authorities to keep such evidence out of the public eye. However, elsewhere, some evidence sits in museums, right in our faces, potentially misidentified as archaic hominids like Homo erectus, Heidelberg gensis, and others. The Pintubi 1 skull is a case in point. Discovered in 1905 near Australia's Darling River in the tribal territory of an Aboriginal tribe called the Pintubis. The skull was then and is now an enigma. One look at this remarkable skull and it is plainly obvious that it is not your normal Homo sapiens skull. Indeed, it more closely resembles an archaic hominid like Homo erectus. The problem is, according to accepted scientific theory, Homo erectus nor any other potential candidate ever lived in Australia. A landmass whose first hominids, Homo sapiens sapiens, supposedly only arrived on the continent between 40 and 60,000 years ago. Erectus walked the earth over 200,000 years ago, yet here he is, not only out of place but also out of time. For you see, the age of this particular skull is only somewhere between 150 and 250 years old, not 200,000. Scientists were very puzzled at its unearthing in 1905 and still are today. Some postulated that perhaps it was a deformed Pintubi tribal member. But deformities do not produce skeletal structure akin to an ancient member of the Homo genus. So if it is too young to be an archaic hominid and not the result of some deformity, what else could it be? An anthropologist from the University of Michigan was sent a mould of the Pintubi skull. His description will sound familiar to Bigfoot researchers. Quote, the skull is complete and quite robust. The moderately low vault has a marked frontal slope with a well-developed sagittal keel along the midline. End quote. Here we have the cone-shaped head described by multiple witnesses to the Type 1 Sasquatch, immortalized by the famous Patterson-Gimlin film of Patty. Here is a superimposed three-quarter view of the Pintubi skull over an image of Patty. The anthropologist goes on to say, quote, Also notable is the distinct nuchal torus, occipital bun, at the rear area of neck muscle attachment. This means the owner of this skull had massive neck muscles. He would have looked like a footballer wearing shoulder pads. Once again, perfectly matching the no-neck appearance attributed to Sasquatch by witnesses. It is also well accepted in the Bigfoot research community that the hairy folk are mostly nocturnal and have excellent night vision. Have a look at this side by side comparison. On the left, the Pintubi 1 skull. On the right, Homo sapiens sapiens. Note the huge eye sockets. Is it possible that in the case of the Pintubi skull we are looking not at the skull of some deformed Aboriginal, nor the remnant of some ancient ancestor? Are we in fact looking at the remains of the Australian Bigfoot, the Yowie. 
As usual, such finds bring more questions than answers. How many ancestral hominid remains have been labelled Homo erectus, or Homo heidelbergensis, or any other of the many ancestors in our family tree? Remains which actually might be of something else. Perhaps something still wandering the wild places under the starlit skies. Next time you are outside at night, looking up at the moon, allow your imagination to wonder at what else may be out there looking up at the same moon through the branches of a darkened forest. Perhaps an apex predator who has survived and thrived throughout the centuries, Homo sapiens nocturnus. After all, if the Homo genus has been so evolutionarily successful in the bright light of day, why would it not be as successful evolving to fill the niche of the night?